everybody's looking for the key to success to help them grow, to become more successful. You're not going to find it in a sales book. You're not going to find it in a marketing book, a book on competitive advantage, a book on strategy, a book on innovation. No, it's going to be an understanding how to build mental toughness, resiliency. That's what you need. That it's a set up, not a set back. Because I refuse to allow a negative circumstance to dictate my life. You think it's actually going to work out that way. <laughs> Here's the thing that you don't understand. Is that it's never going to beat me down. It's never going to defeat me. I'm never going to allow this to beat me. Because life doesn't happen to me. It happens for me. There are demons all around us. Demons in the form of fear. Anxiety, guilt, depression, sadness, bullying, learned helplessness, negativity. And if we allow these demons to control us, we will only continue to lose the battle on mental health. It's time for us to cut the crap from our lives and go on offense against these demons by building mental toughness and resiliency. That's why you're here. My name is Ryan Caligiuri, and welcome to the Cut the Crap Show. What is going on, everybody? Ryan Kelliger here. Cut the Crap Show. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. Always means a lot to me that you do. And if this is your first time joining, then welcome. You know what we're doing here. Well, if you're your first time here, you have no idea what we're doing here. So if it's your first time here at the show, every single week I read a book. I condense that book down to a handful of golden nuggets. Just giving you the straight goods. Trying to save you time, bring you some information that can spark change. And every single week, I'm trying to help you build resilience because that's a skill that we're not paying enough attention to. And my whole goal is to make you more resilient, more optimistic, more enthusiastic, more energetic by the time you leave this show. It's a tough task for me, but uh, I got you. I got you back. All right, before we crack into this week's episode, don't forget to get online, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, subscribe, connect to me, and uh, you can see what I'm going, what I'm doing, what's going on throughout the week. And on YouTube, I started the Create Your 8 vlog. That's my philosophy. You want to know how to build resilience? Create Your 8 is the methodology that I've developed by looking at multiple studies, reading books, having the conversations, and putting resilience to the test. And seeing what I can do to help give people their lives back, to help increase their quality of life, to help bring back their enthusiasm, to help combat stress, combat depression, combat anxiety, combat negativity. That's what I do. So subscribe to YouTube and you definitely be able to catch that uh, show every single day. I'm doing it pretty much every single day, but I'm actually going to enhance that a little bit more. I'm going to keep improving it. That's just something I've committed to doing this year and I'm going to keep doing it moving forward. Also, if you love the show and you're listening on an Apple device, then please go to the podcast app, go to shows, scroll up to the Cut the Crap show and give this bad boy whatever ranking you believe it deserves, but preferably a five star. That'd mean a lot to me. All right, this week, what are we do talking about? What are we do, do talking about? Just got a little stutter there. We're talking about a book by an old philosopher, an old Stoic, Seneca. And the book is called On the Shortness of Life. Life is long if you know how to use it. So this is an interesting book for maybe those of you who have hit your 20s. Maybe you just hit that 30 milestone, that 40 milestone, that 50 milestone, whatever. You're hitting a certain milestone and now you're starting to feel like, oh man, my life is going by so fast. I'm so old. How many of you 30 year olds out there, people just turned 30 or just turned 40. You're like, my life is done. I'm on the back nine of life now. It's over. You know, my life is just passing before me. Seneca believed the exact same thing, which I find is very interesting. This stoic, this philosopher believed the same thing. But after thinking about it deeper, he realized that life is in fact very long and you can really extend it based on how you think. And a lot of the times, the reason why it seems so short is because we're not using our lives as best as possible. So my goal at the end of this podcast, the end of this show, is to help you maybe see a different perspective on your life. Maybe help reframe certain things to make you say, you know what, before I did say that life was short and it was passing me by and you know, my best years were behind me. I don't want you to hold those thoughts anymore. Those thoughts don't serve you. They're not helpful. In fact, they might even be borderline negative. And why do I say they're negative? Because they don't serve you. 
Do they put you in a better state of mind? Do they help you create your eight? I don't think so. I really don't think so. So, what does my man Seneca have to say? Let's get into this one. So, golden nugget number one. Life is short if you focus on trivialities. How true is that? How many things in your life are you executing on every single day that are trivial in nature? I mean, come on. We all know what that is. Social media is as trivial as it can possibly get. You sit there in, at your desk. You sit there in bed, whatever. You sit there even on the can, sitting there just scrolling on social media for hours on end, playing Fortnite, playing PUBG, whatever it is, playing Brick Breaker or whatever it is. What is, what is that? Candy Crush? Whatever. You're doing things that are quite trivial and not really adding to the satisfaction of your life. And there's studies, Adam Alter in our book, uh, I believe it was Irresistible. We had Adam Alter on where he's talking about how technology is impacting us. He even said that technology by itself doesn't make you happier. In fact, when you do things like play games, search social media, you actually become less satisfied. You're not as happy. I find that crazy. And the fact that the thing that we do most is actually hurting us and it's trivial. It's making our life seem short. Now, Seneca had no idea that social media would exist today. I mean, this was written, I don't know, 40 AD. So a long time ago. He had no idea what this would become. And if only he saw what our world came to now, he would be, he'd be disgusted. Because we're wasting so much time. But here's the funny thing. I could talk about social media and watching TV and flipping through Netflix, but you know that. You know that's trivial. So... Here's a little surprising thing for you. Seneca also says that the goals you have can be seen as trivial. Now you might say, hold on a second, Ryan. Goals. You always see the foundation of Create Your Eight is having goals that you shoot for, goals that you aspire to achieve, goals that focus you. So how can you listen to Seneca who tells you that goals are no longer any good? The difference is... Your attitude and your focus while striving to achieve those goals. Let me explain. When you're focused on achieving a goal, you should be enjoying the process. Gary Vaynerchuk says this all the time in all of his books, almost all of his videos. He always says this. Enjoy the process of going through achieving your goal. Because you can't say, I will be happy when. You know, I'll be happy when I achieve this goal. I'll be happy when I have this whatever, car, house, job, whatever, book deal, whatever it is you have. That's not the case. Instead, you have to say, I am happy every single day because I have the freedom to work on what I am, uh, what I choose. I have the freedom to work on my goals. And you have to find happiness every day because when life seems short, it seems short because every single day, you are living in a state of dissatisfaction because you have not yet achieved your goal. My goal is out there. And until I get that goal, I'm not going to be happy. And so your days just rush by because all you're trying to do is get to that goal, get to that goal. It's going to be some sometime in the future. And so you don't find pleasure in the current state today, in the present. And so Seneca says, if you are focused on pursuing power or status, if you're focused on pursuing a life of luxury, or if you're seeking glory after death, especially those three things, you're looking too far into the future and you're not enjoying the present. And what's going to extend your life is finding enjoyment in the present. So how many of you are finding enjoyment in the daily grind? You might want to build a great body. Are you finding enjoyment in going to the gym? Are you making that journey to the gym an 8 out of 10 experience? Again, create your 8. In your drive to build your business, are you finding enjoyment in the daily problem solving, in the daily growth, in the daily research? No? Then you have a problem here. You're not finding enjoyment in the current state. Then your life will seem shorter. That's what Seneca's saying. And it's my goal as part of Create Your Aid. It's finding gratitude in everything that you're doing. Something that maybe you sit down at, and I have the CY8 meter where every single day, <clears throat> every hour, I say, take a tab on how you feel. How do you feel right now? Are you a four out of eight, five out of eight, six out of eight, seven out of eight? 
How do I get you to an eight? If you're sitting down doing work right now and you're like, I'm a four out of eight, good to know. How do I get you to a five? And how do I get you to a six, to a seven, to an eight? That's what you need to try to focus on. Honestly, it just changes your perspective or it comes with a change in perspective. Understand that the work you're doing now is contributing to your future growth. Understand the work you're doing now could teach you something that you didn't know. Understand the work that you're doing now is creating the building blocks for the next win in your, in your, in your life. There's a lot of benefit to you doing the daily work, to you going to the gym every single day. Find enjoyment in what you're doing. Put on music. Have a, have a cup of coffee while you're doing it. Go to your favorite restaurant. Go to your favorite cafe. Whatever you're doing, find enjoyment in the present moment. It'll make your life longer because you'll find more enjoyment out of life. And it's less of, I'll be happy when I get there. No, no, no. I'm happy today and I'm going to be happy every single day. Because I have the freedom to choose what I want to do and I'm working towards the achievement of my goals. Such an important point. Golden nugget number two, busyness doesn't equal fulfillment. And how true is that? How often is it that we just get so caught up, we get so busy that we feel like we are on our path because we're just so busy? One of my friends once said, uh, mentors actually, once said that busyness is the new stupid, Ryan. I completely agree. Busyness is the new stupid. What is busyness though? Busyness is going from task to task to task without understanding how it actually contributes to the greater goal. Taking on a whole bunch of work that you don't know how it's going to contribute to the achievement of your goal at the end of the day, how it's going to make your business better, how it's going to make you better. Are you sure you should be doing this task? If you didn't do this task, if you just left it to somebody else or if you delegated it, would you be better off? A lot of the times the answer to that is yes. We're taking on too much responsibility. We're too busy. And we're doing things that in the end don't really contribute a great deal to whatever it is we're trying to get to. And I work with a lot of CEOs, a lot of CEOs who refuse to delegate, who love to take it all on the chin. They do all the work themselves. And at the end of the day, they say, I'm so busy. I don't have time to do the important stuff. Like go and do client meetings, go and be creative with marketing. I hear this all the time and you would think, you would think that these incredibly intelligent people will pull themselves out of their busy worlds to understand that this is not right. This is not working. I'm not focusing on the things that are important. Instead, I'm taking care of this fire here and this fire here and this fire here. I get it. I understand. You are the last line of defense as a CEO, as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as a freelancer, whatever. And you have to deal with all problems. I get it. But there's a better way to do that. Sectioning off time in your calendar is one strategy to do that. Section off two hours out of your day for busyness. And just write that in your calendar. Cordon off two hours in your calendar to say, this is where I'm going to do the busy work, which is following up on the emails, telling all your employees to come in and interrupt you at this time, uh, deal with all the small little office issues, you know, like Jeremy didn't order the coffee or, you know, Kelly, whatever, didn't buy a new plunger for the toilet. And it's still overflow, like all this piddly garbage that you're going to go deal with. And you're going to say, oh, Kelly's not going to do it. I got to go to, you know, the hardware store and go pick up a plunger. It's amazing. And you laugh. You might laugh, but that's something that I heard last week with one of my CEOs. I said, where's my, where's, where's my guy at? Oh, he went to the hardware store. For what? He had to go pick up a plunger. And I sat there and just kind of did one of those things, like face palm. You know that emoji? Yeah, I, I emoji the face palm yesterday or, or a couple of days ago when I sent that to him. What are you doing? Your company, your troops, your people, your customers, your vendors rely on you to be focused. And instead, you're occupying yourself with the busy work. Kind of went on a little tangent there, my God. Anyways, what is it in your life that you're doing on a regular basis that isn't contributing to the quality of your life? There's a form of imagery that Seneca uses that I really love. It's Let's just say a ship left the port and spent the next year being thrown about by a big storm. You can't say that that ship had a very good journey because it was getting tossed about here and there by waves, by the wind, whichever way the wind blew, the ship went. 
There's a lot of you in life who are going through, or there's a lot of you who are going through life that way. Where you're not focused on a course. You don't have a destination. You wake up in the morning and you allow the winds and the waters to carry you about. You wake up in the morning, you get an email from somebody and you say, you know what? I'm going to take this course today instead of whatever goal I had planned. You know, oh, I'm going to do this instead. Or I'm going to do this instead. You don't have focus. So the key here, number one, set aside time in your calendar every single day to do the busy work. And two, get some focus, set some goals, know where you're going and head in that direction every day so that you can quiet all the noise. Because when you don't have goals, a lot of stuff can come in your head and distract you. So set a goal, set time in your calendar to be busy. Great takeaways that all my CEOs, well, I try and I try and I got to beat them up once in a while when they don't do it, but I want them to section off time to be busy and I want them to all have goals. I feel like it's the fourth time I've said that, but what do they say? You have to say something seven times before it gets received. So for the sixth time or fifth time, whatever, set goals and set time in your calendar to be busy. There you go. All right, golden nugget number three. This is an interesting one. You could choose to be educated by the world's greatest minds. Now, that golden nugget talks about choosing which philosophers, what kind of people you want to learn from. The big takeaway for me in this golden nugget is that education is critical to prolonging your life or the perception that your life is longer. Here's something I started to ponder. How often do you go back and think about how long life seemed when you were in elementary school, when you were in junior high, when you were in high school, when you were in university or college if you went? Life seemed to be going really, really slow. Because every single day you had to go into school, you had to learn something. And as you're older, you kind of attribute that to just being younger. I was younger and life just seemed so much slower and life seemed so long back in the day. Think about it for a second. Every single day when you went into school, you were learning something new. You, your brain was always being activated. Fast forward now, what do you do? You are on this hamster wheel of routine where you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you go to work, you come home, you eat, you watch TV, you go back to bed, you do the exact same thing the next day. Sure, there's a little bit of variety in there, but for the most part, you are on this hamster wheel. No wonder life seems short. Back in the day, you were always learning something new. Your brain was constantly being stimulated. You were sitting there and being challenged. You were forced to grow. You were forced to learn. You're sitting there trying to figure out some subtra subtraction, addition, fraction, science, biology. You, you're learning something new all the time. And because of that, it seems like your life was prolonged. And you might be sitting there saying, hmm, I'm not sure I'm with you on this, Ryan. Follow me here. My life, my own personal experience is that I feel like my life is being prolonged. I feel like my days are so long because every single day I'm reading. Every single day I'm learning something. And I feel like my life is going slower because I'm spending so much time learning. And at the end of the day, I say, man, I learned a lot. I learned about this piece of research. I learned about this piece of research. I connected with this person. I had this meeting. I had this conversation. I accomplished this, this task. I talked to these four CEOs. I booked this speaking engagement. And every single day feels like I did so much. And when you feel like you've done so much, accomplished so much, you feel like you've had a full day. And the alternative is that if you didn't have a full day, if you just did, as I said, you were on your hamster wheel of routine, wake up, eat something, go to work, come home, eat something, watch TV, go to bed, do it all again tomorrow. You're not doing a whole heck of a lot. Your days are going to go by so fast because each day is so shallow. You didn't pump enough learning into each day. You didn't extract as much as you possibly could from each day. Instead, you just survived the day. When we were kids, when we were younger, we had so much in our day. We had hobbies. We had recess. We had learning. Yet we still had TV. We still had eating. We still had all these activities, but we had more of them as kids. And why is that as we get older, we try to simplify our lives and that might be a good thing, but we dedicate too much time to certain things, right? Our families maybe said, you know, an hour of TV, you know, and then I want you to go outside and play. And then I want you to go clean your room. And then I want you to go study. 
right? Then I want you to go walk the dog. It's like, holy smokes, I have so much to do this evening. But as you get older, what is it? Now you control your own schedule. What is it I do? I work, I maybe clean a little bit, I eat, and I watch TV. That's it. But then you say, oh, I'm so busy. Listen, this goes back to the last golden nugget. You're so busy. Well, what are you doing to fulfill your life? Anyways, this comes all the way back to the point that Seneca is saying, educate yourself. Dig deep into something that you are interested in. And don't tell me you're not interested in something. Find something to be interested in. Are you interested in direct sales? Are you interested in marketing? Are you interested in pottery? Are you interested in photography? Are you interested in lawn care? Are you interested in bugs? Are you interested in clouds, in astronomy, in astrology, in rocks? What are you interested in? Find something to pour your energy into. It's going to make your life seem longer. It's going to make you feel more fulfilled. It's going to give you something to have a, a, something to pour your energies into. It's going to give you a hobby, something you can get excited about. Education and learning is absolutely key. But Seneca also makes sure he points out there's no point in reading just to compile trivial facts. You have to educate yourself purposefully. So don't just go randomly picking out books and educating yourself. Dig deep into something. Learn a new skill. Pick up a new hobby. Become an expert at something. That will make your life seem much longer. Golden nugget number four. This is a really quick one, but Seneca says that true satisfaction comes from within. And we all know that. We all know that to a certain extent, but a lot of us still attach our happiness to having things. Having this Jeep, having this G-Wagon, having this Range Rover, having this phone, this pair of shoes, uh, this purse, this pair of clothing, whatever. We associate happiness to retail therapy a lot of the times. And we form our identity based on what we wear, what we have. And there's nothing wrong with having nice stuff. Don't get me wrong. But there is something wrong when your happiness is attached to that, when your value, your self-worth is attached to that. What happens if you lost your shoes, lost your purse, lost your car? Would you still feel happy? Would you still feel confident in who you are? If the answer to that is no, it would change me up a little bit, then you need to take a deep look inside yourself and understand how I'm building myself up. Am I happy with my body? Maybe I should work out more. Am I happy with my career? Maybe I should find something that adds more purpose to my life, gets me more excited. Am I happy with the relationships I have? Do they add to my life? Do they bring me up? If not, then maybe I need to find some relationships that do. How connected am I to my my community? Because my community can make me really happy. Maybe I should connect more to my community and help community causes. What can I do to help other people? There's so much opportunity for us to build happiness by giving time to other things, by associating with different people, by having certain goals. That's where true happiness comes in. The problem is a lot of us are finding our happiness in buying material things. And Seneca knew this way back when. This is obviously just a human nature thing. If he knew this way back in 400 or 40 AD, this still exists today, probably even more so today, where we're very materialistic. So the reminder here is work on yourself, work on the relationships in your life, work on your community, work on your health, work on your goals, work on your, your position in your career, work on your position in life. The material things come as a result of your success. You don't go after the material things to make you feel like a success. That's the difference and a great reminder from Seneca. And last but not least, golden nugget number five, this one really hits home with me. To ensure a healthy mind, tailor your career to your personality and please don't forget to enjoy yourself. This one is so important. How often do we take jobs, J-O-Bs, for the money? We want the money. We know that this isn't a fit for us, but we take it because it's good money. I did that for so many years and I was truly not happy. But you feel stuck because what I really want to do is it going to pay me a lot of money at first or I don't know how to make money at this at first. And so we never explore it and we just stick in our job. And my personality is too big for a job. And I, I, that might sound cocky, but it's not. Like everybody who knows me, when I had a job and I got out of my job, everyone says, man, I, I was waiting for you to do this. You were not meant for that. And it's shocking how many people told me that. People knew it more than I did. 
So Seneca's point here, it is so brilliant. Tailor your career to your personality. What is your personality? Who are you as an individual? Do some soul searching inside and say, you know, am I destined to be a lawyer for the rest of my life? Am I destined to be an office manager for the rest of my life? Is this who I am? In today's world where you have the option of doing anything, you could start a podcast on anything, monetize it, build a, a product around it, build to sell t-shirts around it, whatever. You can build a community around anything. Gary Vaynerchuk says, if you're into Smurfs, Smurf it up. And he's right. You can start a Smurf blog, a Smurf podcast, and you can get people listening to you. People who are just as <laughs> happy and, and excited about Smurfs as you are. And you can make money off of that. You might not make millions upon millions of dollars, but you can make enough money to be happy. So this is really important because for so many years, I wasted my, my, my life by going into an office every day doing things that I didn't enjoy doing. And that was painful. And I look back on that and I don't say, wow, what a waste. I say, wow, what a lesson. What a lesson for me. Did I learn a lot there? Of course I did. But I had to go through the pain in order to understand and learn that lesson. And I'm hoping to share this golden nugget with you to, again, plant a seed, maybe spark something in your mind to say, am I where I should be today? Does this workplace, does this place of work inspire me? Does it allow me to be myself? Don't get me wrong. Well, I'm not saying leave the place of work, leave a job for being an entrepreneur. I'm not saying that at all. That's really tough. I'm not saying to do that. I'm saying find a place that you can work in that you are allowed to be yourself you feel like you are yourself. You don't have to put on this facade. You're able to get your personality out. You're able to have fun. You're able to be expressive. You're able to share your opinions, express your attitude, and you feel like this place fills you up. It satisfies you. There's a lot of places out there with great managers, great CEOs that create workplaces that are like that. Go after those places and figure out if the career path you're on, the workplace you're in, is a match for your personality. If it's not you need to start doing some soul searching and find out what your personality is and where you belong. And again, it comes down to extracting the most out of your day, having fun. When you're having fun, when you're happy, when you're optimistic, you're not trying to rush through the day. Your life seems short because you're going into the office every single day and you're saying, man, I can't wait for the end of the day. And at the end of the day, you're saying, man, I can't wait for Friday. And on Saturday, you're saying, oh man, I just hope Saturday and Sunday go by as slow as possible because I don't want to go back on Monday. And so five days out of the seven, you're just trying to rush through to get to the next two because you can't wait for the weekend. You're living for the weekend. No wonder your life seems short when you're living for the weekend. You're living for two days. You just cut the majority of your week off. Seneca was brilliant to end off his book on this point. Find a place of work that is a match for your personality and that you're able to enjoy yourself in. And currently, if you're not, find a place of work where you can. I cannot stress that enough. All right, there we have it. That is On the Shortness of Life. Life is Long If You Know How to Use It by Seneca. Such great takeaways. Again, Seneca, one of the great thinkers of our world. And he provided us a lot of stimulus, a lot of new ideas, and hopefully there was something in this podcast today, in this episode, in this show that might spur you on to think something new, that might give you a different perspective, that might make you take a second just to think a little bit deeper about your own life and what you're doing. And if it did, then please let me know. Connect with me online, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Subscribe to the Cut, Create Your 8 show on, on, uh, on YouTube. Just search me up, Ryan Caligiuri, on all those platforms. You'll be able to find me. Share your thoughts with me. Share your big takeaways from this episode. Let me know what you've been thinking deeply about. Let me know what you thought about this episode. I want to hear it. If you love this episode, then please, especially if you're listening on an iTunes device or an Apple device, sorry, go online, rate and review the show, preferably a five-star ranking. I'd greatly appreciate that. That would mean a lot to me. All right, last but not least here, I don't do this very often, but I got to do it for my little sister, Stephanie Caligiuri. She created her own podcast, her own show called The People's Scientist, where every single week for 20 minutes, she's cutting the crap from all the marketing garbage out there. She's cutting the crap from the research papers, and she's giving you the straight goods on health and wellness. She's a PhD. She's a neuroscientist. She works at a Mount Sinai hospital. She's absolutely killing it. 
And she's got so many great episodes that will help you get smarter and understand health a lot better and help you live your best life. She talks about things like your brain on junk food, uh, the value of apple cider vinegar, the power of intermittent fasting. She's got a couple episodes on that. Um, Bone broth. Is it as good as people say it is for you? You talk about the marketing people. The marketing people tell you it's liquid gold. She argues that it's not. So anyways, go out there, subscribe to her podcast because... That's what the Caligari kids are trying to do here on this planet. We're just trying to make you smarter. All right, I'm trying to help you build up your mindset, help you build resilience. resilience. And she's taking all of her education as a PhD and uh, a neuroscientist. She's helping you become healthy as well. And I'm telling you, we're just doing our thing out here. We're just trying to make you smarter. We're trying to make you healthier. It's Caligari kids. We got your back. Don't worry about it. All right. In any case, go out there, subscribe to her show. That would mean a lot to me. And of course, it would mean a lot to her as well. But anyways, my friends, that is a wrap for this week. So thank you so much again for your attention. It always means a lot to me. And I'll catch you back here next week. We have a brand new book, brand new Golden Nuggets. And you know what I'm doing here every single week. Just trying to save you time, bring you information that can spark change your life, and I'm helping you build resilience. Have a great, fantastic, productive week, everybody. Love you all. There's only two measures that matter, and that's effective and ineffective. Are you effective? Are you accomplishing the mission? And if you are, figure out a way to become even more effective. If you're ineffective, you're not accomplishing the mission, then you gotta figure it out. You gotta take ownership of that. You gotta solve that problem. If your team isn't getting the job done, as a leader, you have to drive those standards. I learned pretty early on that in the SEAL teams, there's some strong personalities there, which is awesome. That's one of the great things about the SEAL teams. And there's always this tension between, we should do it this way, or we should do it this way, or we should train this hard, or we should focus here or there. But as a leader, you have got to maintain the standards. And there are standards that just cannot be compromised. You've got to push hard. You've got to drive that performance. You've got to set the tone for that. And if you don't do that, no one's going to do it. It's the performance that you see. And if it's substandard, you've got to push again. And you've got to push again. You've got to set that bar high. Now, that being said, you can't drive your team to the ground. You have to lead them. You can't be a slave driver. You can't destroy your team. You can't be overbearing. But for those things that really matter, pushing performance to the next level, you have got to set that standard. And I think that's what makes truly the, the best military units, the best teams out there great. It's not the words that you say. It's not the email that you sent. It's not the banner that you created to put on the wall or the PowerPoint slides that you built. It's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate.